So, hello, I'm Eugene Slametnikov, and I'm a space developer, and I'm going to talk about uh, Netlink decoding in S trace. Um, probably everyone here who decided to come here familiar what trace is. Uh, it's a diagnostic utility, a Cisco tracer, but uh, it's not on Cisco Tracer, it has some other capabilities, even though they're not, not so prominent. So, and this is mostly the result of the fact that uh, interaction of between the user space processes and the kernel is not limited by the Cisco's themselves. And well, Trace as being a debugging tool and a Tracer tries to capture uh, as much as it can in terms of uh, this uh, user space kernel interaction. So, like, some of the items mentioned here, like uh, dispatcher syscalls or IO during BPF, of course, themselves as syscalls. But the issue with them is that uh, they're not like, behave uh, like some other syscalls. Basically, uh, they do not pro uh, impose any specific semantics uh, in terms of the argument and leave it out to the rest of the kernel to implement it. Like the famous or infamous example is IOCTL that basically has no semantics, that just a way to do something with uh, with uh, uh, something associated with descriptor. But there are also like dispatcher syscalls that are pretty uh, kitchen, pretty much a kitchen sink. For example, I've seen TL, uh, it mostly used for controlling uh, flags associated with file uh, descriptor. Also, it controls uh, locks and seals associated with file descriptors and some kinds of locks not entirely associated with file descriptor, but the underlying file. The same goes for PRCTL, which is abbreviation for process control, and so on and so on. So, um, IORINC is particularly egregious because basically it hides uh, from this uh, usual uh, user space kernel boundaries that can be expected with P-Trace Cisco uh, by introducing the asynchronous uh, kernel ring me mechanism that has to be expected in a different way. But we are here mostly talking about Netlink and it's probably worth noting why Netlink is needed in the first place because as I already mentioned, uh, there already exists a uh, catch-all Cisco, which is IUCTL, that uh, basically provides ability for uh, kernel developers, for kernel to provide any kind of service uh, that is associated with a particular file descriptor. And uh, by the virtue of issuing these file descriptors, uh, for example, using special syscalls like perf, uh, signalfd, um, what else? Uh, oh, the uh, uh, mfd and so on, and you can basically produce these file descriptors on the go and don't uh, confined by those uh, devices that are available via the DLFS, uh, via slash dev. Um, So uh, IOCTL is a vehicle that is used for implementing many kinds of uh, kind of uh, kernel interfaces, like most of them, of course, uh, device bound, like of various kinds of devices like NTD, video for Linux, uh, GPIO, NBD, uh, RTC, and so on. But also, as I mentioned, uh, by the virtue of producing uh, virtual file descriptors, uh, some kind, uh, some parts of the kernel that are not di directly associated with 
devices can be also controlled via ECTL, such as SICOM device mapper and so on. And uh, that is actually kind of problematic. Well, it's not problematic per se, but the usage of IOCTL was uh, from both in the user space side and uh, in terms of kernel implementation uh, involves uh, dealing with uh, lots of different, different kinds of prob problems that uh, people most often are not, uh, not aware of. For example, if you implement some IOCTL, you probably want to that uh, it's going to, you want it working on uh, architectures that support uh, compact processes. Well, the most notorious one is x86, but it's also ARM, MIPS, and several others. Um, you probably won't uh, have an ability to extend these interfaces. Uh, and don't uh, add new ones instead of existing ones uh, every time you need to add a new field or uh, uh, add a new flag, for example, because well, you forgot to check the uh, remainder of the field and uh, since user space can pass garbage, it will pass garbage there and uh, you can't basically use this flag, uh, the remaining bits of the flag field anymore. And uh, all this knowledge is not part of any uh, specification that is imposed by our CTL. There are numerous guidelines like how to use requests, how to use, uh, how to implement uh, our CTLs, how to handle compat, and how to handle extending the interfaces, how to write this our CTL interfaces and structures. That are used by this interface in a way that is extendable. But there are still issues with uh, that associated with using uh, IOCTL. So, yeah, like people usually don't care about anything at all and just hard code IOCTL numbers in their code and so that breaks some power and so on. So, one uh, of the issues that Netlink addresses is uh, basically uh, well, trying to be a better LCTL, providing a better general facility that allows various parts of kernel to uh, implement the user space interfaces. By the way, uh, how many here do know what Netlink is? Okay. So I don't need to explain what Netlink is. Great. Um, so uh, Netlink does a lot of heavy lifting by imposing a specific uh, protocol and structure, uh, basically uh, mandating that uh, every part of the message uh, has its type and has its length. So, and also the kernel part of Netlink. Uh, has uh, certain facilities in place for parsing and uh, verifying anything messages pa passed by the user space. So even though it is uh, a lot of boilerplate code, uh, it is still uh, pretty much, it's still much better than IOCTL. Um, so many interfaces uh, as uh, existing one as well as the new one uh, decided to switch to Netlink and uh, basically there is a certain shift in, uh, uh, in the usage of Netlink uh, comparing to IOCTL for example. NVD has switched to Netlink uh, since Netlink was historically created as part of IP root to it also uses Netlink instead of historical uh, ICTL interface uh, and so on. So it would be nice uh, for a stress to handle it, and it does since uh, 2016. It's not a modern feature, it uh, exists for several years. It was implemented as part of 
the initial implementation was done as part of two Google, Google Summer of Code projects, first by uh, Fabian Ceron uh, under the maintainership of Gabriel Vascar and Dmitry Levin, and then by uh, Changing Piao uh, that uh, has implemented, uh, has uh, provided, <coughs> has created a lot of implementation for handling Netlink, Netlink Road protocol and the Netlink SC Linux and uh, several other protocols. Yes. Um, yeah, and since then, basically, Netlink implement, uh, decoding implementation in Astrace is maintained uh, and extended as much as time and ability with the developers. Uh, oh, well. Uh, oh, well. Um, so a bit about implementation. It's actually, there is not much to talk about because Netlink is pretty straightforward protocol that don't have much peculiarities. The probably one major wrinkle that uh, S3 has had since uh, we have a different way of handling uh, uh, memory because we don't have uh, the Netlink, uh, Netlink messages in local memory, but uh, rather retrieve them from the tracing memory. We have uh, pretty elaborate error handling in, in this case, and instead of handling the full uh, Netlink message at once, uh, we retrieve it piecewise and handle possible errors that may occur during this uh, retrieval and handling piecewise. So uh, rather than uh, rely on Libanel and its implementation uh, that basically uh, allows you to pass a Netlink message and a set of uh, attributes and get a table where you get uh, all these attributes pass parsed, uh, we perform some kind of progressive uh, parsing using uh, type keyed uh, decoders decoder tables. So with regards to the testing, uh, it is mostly done the same way as uh, the testing of most of uh, other parts of stress decoding capabilities, uh, which is we synthesize some uh, payloads we want uh, to check parse, parsing for and uh, perform specific syscalls on uh, Netlink socket. Uh, basically, we write to the kernel uh, this uh, synthesized payload and check whether the way the message argument has been parsed is the expected way. So, here is an example. Uh, this kind of parsing, as mentioned in this slide, we have just a set of uh, various markers that aid uh, this kind of testing because, like, various part of various implementators of Netlink interfaces uses uh, various uh, types and. Uh, use this uh, attribute types in various ways and uh, devise uh, different hierarchies uh, of attributes and as a result uh, we have quite, quite extensive set of uh, parsers and this is uh, one of the simpler ones that basically checks whether uh, attribute payload that is integrated interpreted as an object is parsed properly by the virtue of trying to uh, supply a shorter message, a message that uh, ba bounds uh, unreadable memory. So we here have, uh, in the, on the second line, uh, basically unreadable memory which is denoted by its address and yeah, yeah some successful Parsing in the end. Um, 
Here is an example of uh, using uh, of S trace output when uh, it traces uh, SS show sockets uh, binary that is part of IP route to uh, program suite. And uh, here you can see that even though I tried to um, turn it down a bit, it's still quite elaborate because, well, uh, yeah, not, not link messages are quite elaborate. Uh, some of them have quite extensive headers. Uh, so for the referential purposes, the associated message is uh, illustrated on the right. Uh, but you can see here that we try to handle various uh, kinds of attributes and various kinds of data past, like uh, internet addresses, uh, uh, big Indian, well, yeah, big Indian network order data, and uh, uh, this kind of stuff. The, the interface is not decoded because it is zero, but. I don't know why it's zero, but yeah. Um, probably because we the request doesn't didn't have enough flux. Basically, the same thing you expect from uh, other parts of stress in terms of decoding capabilities. Um, so <coughs> let's turn for more interesting part. Where, where which is, well, when I think decoding is not so boring. Uh, it's not so boring when kernel breaks something. For example, um, one of uh, SOCDIAG protocols, uh, SOCDIAG protocol implementations, uh, namely SMC protocol, uh, decided uh, after a successful implementation of IPv6 support uh, of the protocol uh, well, being able to be tunneled on top of IPv6 decided to supply uh, the address family or uh, it's tunneled upon uh, as part of the inner diag header which is used by astrays to disturb which protocol, sh uh, sh well, which protocol uh, the NetDiac message associated with. And uh, basically it made it impossible for uh, Astralis to deco decode this protocol correctly anymore, for, at least for three kernel versions. Um, the funny thing is it mostly went unnoticed initially because the main user of uh, this Netlink uh, protocol, which is uh, SS, show sockets, it doesn't implement uh, dumping of sockets for all protocol families at once. So it, it doesn't need to discern between uh, messages uh, belonging to different address families, but rather it performs dumping for each address family separately. It just ignores this uh, family field. So another part is that most of the time you can uh, understand what, uh, how payload should be interpreted uh, by just by looking uh, at the attributes type and know where in the message you are. But it's not always the case because uh, sometimes uh, these attributes or attribute hierarchies are uh, protocol specific or address family specific. And uh, one way some parts of uh, kernel implemented is to provide an additional kind or address family specification, uh, specific uh, attribute that uh, tells what kind of uh, address family it is, which works nice when you just parse all the Netlink message at once, but uh, doesn't go well with progressive parsing. So, uh, as a result, we have to 
perform some context tra context tracking uh, and uh, uh, pass this information between the decoders. Luckily, all the parts of the kernel that provide this information about uh, type of uh, and as about the protocol or address families that the attribute are associated with. First, provide this uh, information about protocol and then the rest that is uh, protocol specific. So, so far it works well, but who knows uh, how uh, some you know, implementer decides to use it. Because, um, <coughs> oh, okay, oh, sorry. Uh, because there's actually other way to provide this kind of information and basically use this protocol as a type of the container uh, of a method attribute. Unfortunately, uh, at least one place that uh, provides this information this way is bo uh, has it botched because uh, Almost all families except one do this exact do exactly that except uh, for uh, IF breach that decided that well it has to be special and doesn't provide this hierarchy and unfortunately it can't be fixed because well not in a not in attribute hierarchy is part of well, UAPI and you can can break a UAPI so there is also some minor wrinkles in. For example, uh, uh, as I mentioned, since Netlink is a better uh, IOCTL, is supposed to allow Netlink protocol, Netlink interface implementers uh, avoid all the issues associated, or most of the issues associated with IOCTL. Unfortunately, uh, all this goes to Wayne once uh, someone decides to pass structures as is as part of as pivot of Netlink attributes, which uh, brings back all the issues associated with uh, uh, extending attributes, maintaining uh, compat compatibility, handling uh, variances between. Uh, between uh, alignment uh, of uh, not naturally aligned uh, fields on different architectures and so on. So, uh, despite the fact that well, it is more or less known and these uh, mistakes are way, left off, uh, way less often than they used to be, they, sti they still happen from time to time. Luckily, for s trace most of the time it is possible to at least discern between uh, various versions of the structure based on its size, which is not always the possibility uh, with the RCTL because some RCTL implementation, some RCTL interfaces do not populate uh, structure size properly in the IUCT request number. Mm. Yeah, and another fun fact that uh, some parts of uh, Netlink interface implementation just ignore the fact that well, Netlink attribute type field is for types and use it uh, as uh, array index. But, okay. Um, yeah, so currently, we have uh, several protocols supported in S trace. Probably most prominent support is Netlink route. But, uh, I'd say that almost all message types are supported almost fully. Like we have some issues with uh, here and there, for example, this. Uh, uh, some uh, protocol specific uh, attribute hierarchies, but yeah, mo most associated uh, with uh, tunnels, yes. And uh, SOCDIAC is not actually fully supported because there is like one attribute that is not properly decoded that is associated with uh, 
protocol specific uh, socket information but yeah it's a good shape at least for this several protocols there are of course many more but well, it is there um, so some fun statistics um, I already have compared uh, Netlink and IOCTL several times and it's pretty much comparable in terms of decoding implementation like uh, IOCTL decoders by far like most extensive uh, set of decoders present in s -trace. like they account for more than 10% of all s traces code and uh, basic uh, Netlink decoding uh, support actually is quite close to it uh, so as I mentioned like we have quite an extensive uh, Netlink road support and one of most prominent uh, parts of Netlink road uh, is uh, Netlink road link uh, protocol no, set of messages uh, and yeah, it's uh, basically the third largest file or second largest file in S3 code base, uh, right behind the main S3 file itself and the file with utility functions. Um, what pertains the future plans? Basically, uh, one area where S3 is significantly lacking is uh, support of uh, generic generic netlink uh, there are several attempts uh, been made to support it and uh, coincidentally we've gotten uh, yet another pull request basically this week so uh, it's probably can be addressed and uh, paves the way for adding various uh, generic netlink uh, protocols into s -trace. Uh, another big area which is probably quite important is uh, lack of proper Netlink net filter decoding because well, while we support the IP part of IP route, we don't support much the TC and uh, uh, net filter type, uh, net filter part. And uh, since, and since uh, Netlink decoders are finally moving to some machine generated code or and machine, gener uh, machine understandable net, uh, specifications it's probably would be nice to support them as well with similarly to the way we support uh, generation of uh, IUCTL decoders based on uh, color like uh, specifications and this is probably it so, any questions? Yes, please. Um, I'm interested in how you generate the last reverse size, the next one, the what? Um, you said that the last error game, what's that? Uh, so, it's um, a recent, well, relatively so a recent, like probably two years. Uh, YNL is a Netlink uh, scheme based well, uh, Netlink schemes for various Netlink protocols that is uh, that are written in YAML. So there is uh, like this is slowly going. Like one part is uh, dis uh, describing existing. Um, Netlink protocols, for example, uh, there is a lot of effort in, in fully describing KTH2 and another part uh, for generating uh, the uh, parsers and handlers for this uh, Netlink in the car. Uh, because, well, as everyone probably knows that Netlink decoders and Netlink parsers in the kernel have lots and lots of boilerplate code that uh, don't, uh, well, that, that can be easily generated, I would say.
do have five minutes. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, in, in yes. continuation to the, the previous question. So do you think if the, in the kernel they would use this generated subcar or interfaces, this would reduce the number of all these qualities we in strays have to work around. And what could be done on the to convince kernel developers actually do this? Well it's Basically the same way as with IOCTL, like uh, the first, like several uh, historical uh, Netlink protocols are handwritten and ha have all these peculiarities and we basically have to live with them. But uh, as uh, the subsystem matures, like, it, like uh, mo it's more streamlined and newer, uh, for example, Generic Netlink actually has some provisions, like has strict specifications how to handle structures, how to handle arrays, this kind of stuff, and uh, provides specific Netlink schemes that will allow this uh, implement in the same way in an extensible way. So basically, uh, it probably will be the same as we have with IOCTL. Like we have some part that is historical and contains all these peculiarities and we have some generated parts that, that support the new web interfaces and new web protocols. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, with regards to the output, it doesn't... Uh, 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 there are a few examples in the slides and I must admit they... Like for example, this one. I must admit, it doesn't look that much comprehensible. Yes. What could be done about it? Um, almost all uh, S-trace output is currently tokenized. Uh, there are like several remaining bits, but there can be definitely done, done specific push at least to coverize that. <laughs> and the next step is probably to provide additional information in terms of uh, how well, the next step is probably to, for decoders to provide additional informa information for uh, output generators that can be used for producing power structured output. We actually have a pub request for that but it again went nowhere probably saw it for the first time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's gradually getting in better shape uh, because like when it was first time attempted in 2015, it was basically a rewrite of each decoder in a structured way and it was, well, unsustainable. Like right now, the latest uh, iteration basically is pretty close to what can be done in a way that that's actually upstreamable, at least well. The tokenization and colorization can be done. Like we can uh, already, all, almost everywhere, like there is some weird parts, for example, device mapper decoder, decoding S390 specific uh, syscalls, uh, P-trace uh, commons that are not uh, very well tokenized, but otherwise it's pretty much can be interpreted as a stream of tokens at least.